Probate is, you know, my good friend Tony English taught me, probate is when, when you pass, you suing yourself, paying all the fees to the court and attorneys, and your crumbs get to go to you. In this conception, most states people think that if I have a will, I have a probate. That's not true. In That's most what states. I was going to ask, yes. In most states, your, your will is effectuated or administered in probate court. Hey, what's up, Masters? Today we're with Mr. Bill Gross. What's going on, Bill? Living the dream, David. Living the dream. Yeah, brother. I hear that. It's funny. I was talking to someone earlier today and they're like, how you doing? I'm like, living the dream. <laughs> the dream is like have 5 million things going on at the same time. But uh, it's all good, bro. Uh, so, hey, man, you're you're a, a, a probate guy. And uh, you're also with EXP Realty, which I'm, I'm with EXP now. and uh, but you, and we, before we started recording, you said your specialty is, uh, or your lead generation is probate. So we definitely want to hear, hear about that. But let me mm -hmm. tell you a little bit about you is you're an associate with EXP um, in probate and legal real estate, a certified probate expert, and can be found at the Stanley Mosk Courthouse daily to work with attorneys, petitioners, clients, investors, and other real estate professionals to help them solve their real estate problems. Um, so yeah, man, let's talk about that. Talk to, I've never, I don't think I've ever done a probate deal. I'd love to learn more about it. Oh man, you're missing out. Yeah. You know, the thing about probate people, I got to tell you that regular agents or investors will complain about how difficult a deal is. Mm. A real probate agent will brag about how difficult the probate is. If you can get a, um, two different sellers, a partition action with a probate on one half and a you know, I don't know, a uh, 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 squatter in property and three other problems. That's what I live for is untangling those messes and creating value for my customers and getting paid. I love it. Um, so how long have you been doing probates? So I, I've been in real estate since 1986. So along the way, like a lot of people, I've done an occasional deal. Um, I took classes in it years ago, <clears throat> but about two and a half years ago, when I was leaving management, going into production again, not by choice in a sense, mm -hmm. I'd done real well, but the companies I was working for falling apart. So I had to start over again almost in production. And I met with another colleague at EXP, Don Hobbs. Don Hobbs oh, is the Don. president of yeah. Success Magazine. Yep. Well, he's my sponsor at EXP. I sat down with him and talked about, he, he, did, he does a talk on the brand is you in real estate. And I watched it and I understood the importance of a brand and a focus. And I sat with him about half an hour and kind of flushed it out what that would mean for me in probate. And so for me, my father was an attorney. I, I kind of look like an attorney. I'm older, gray hair. I'm comfortable wearing a suit and tie. I love wearing, you know, conservative suit and going to court. Mm. Many people aren't. That was me. And so sure. for me, I put together a brand and a, and a system to develop business in probate real estate and started that full-time two and a half years ago and just missed icon by that much last year. And I'm right on it this year to qualify. So I've had two really good years as a result of that business. Good for you, man. So, so talk to us about the probate. I'm going to call it the probate play. Um, yeah. Well, first off, why, why did you decide to go in that direction? Like what caused you to go for probate deals? You know, I think that, uh, I don't know. I really fully understood all of it. But I knew that I had to pick a niche or an area to specialize in. And it's one that's authentic to me in that I like working with attorneys. I like going to court. I like solving complicated legal research document problems. Those are all strengths of mine, things that I enjoy and keep Ooh. me interested. So that's kind of why I chose to go into it. And then I worked a plan around that that would work, that was authentic for me and would work for me. Well, that's mind numbing for me, man. I just uh, going through documents and all that stuff is so you do a lot of research <laughs> is what I'm hearing, right? You spend yeah. time researching yeah. and I, I get a lead from somebody who wants to buy a probate. I'll go in, I'll look at the case, I'll pull up the documents. It turns out I know the attorney, I know this other attorney, I know. So I kind of like putting together the pieces and digging in deep to deals. I'm not, you know, people go to houses, nothing wrong with it, but the people who love different finishes and wood materials and designs and 
that I find boring. And, and, and I couldn't literally the, the, the posters behind me, I even know how to hang them. I call my, my son-in-law and he does it for me. I'm just not mechanically inclined, but you give me a real estate deal that's complicated and I am just excited to talk about it uh, more than, I'd rather work on a probate listing than watch a football game and drink beer. How's that? Yeah, I, I like a challenging negotiation. That's for sure. Right. But let me, so let's, let's actually back it up because I want to, let's just say there's people out there that aren't even sure what a probate is. So sure. first off, yeah, let's even define what, what is, what is probate? So it's different in different states and then within states, different counties. I know you're in Massachusetts where my wife, by the way, is from, from Belmont near Boston. Oh, nice. Yeah, nice <clears> so, area. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So in fact, we just saw Tom Brady at the LA stadium uh, last week, two weeks ago. Anyhow, um, probate is, one of my good friends, Tony English taught me, probate is when, when you pass, you suing yourself, paying all the fees to the court and attorneys, and your crumbs get to go to your heirs. And it sounds dramatic, but in reality, in, in particularly California, and in other more litigious states, Florida, New York, Illinois, I'll be honest, I know a lot about Massachusetts, but to some degree, I know a little bit about Massachusetts probate law. When somebody passes, if you've not yet set up your state properly, then you go to the court or the county or the state for direction or approval to change things like ownership and property. Who and does I don't that? Know what it's like the heirs, the, the yeah. trustees and yeah. Yeah. So if you set it up where in, you have a, let's say a, a living trust, let me trust like a corporation, you're creating a third party entity, you kind of put your property in the entity. And when you pass that entity distributes it, you can avoid the court. But if you don't, and, and you either you're, um, uh, there's different rules, if you're married, and you're both on the deed, that's an exception. But in general, if a husband and wife pass, and they have kids, the property is titled in the name of the parents to get it to the kids, even though they're the only heirs, and there might even be a dispute in most states, you have to file with the county to say, hey, mom and dad passed, I'm the kid, and the property should pass to me. And that's the pro process we call probate. The big misconception in most states, people think that if I have a will, I avoid probate. And that's not true in that's most states. That's what I was going to ask, yeah. In I'd... most states, your, your will is effectuated or administered in probate court. So you walk into court with a will and say, well, here's what mom and dad said they want to do with it. But you still have to file. The judge still has to approve it. And it can cost, you know, five, 10, 20, $3,000 or more, depending on how complicated it is, if there's fights amongst the heirs, you know, some of, and, and this brings out the worst in families, you know, especially dysfunctional families where they haven't talked for 20, 30 mm. years, then they hire their own attorney and they argue well, that, well, was it real? Because so you know, dad was sick yeah. and he wrote that. So that's where you get into more difficult cases and they get to be more complicated and, and um, cost more money. It's, it's interesting because when in the beginning I said, I, I have not done any probate deals. That's not true. I've done, I've probably done not, not a lot, but probably a handful. And now you're bringing me back to dealing with, uh, you know, three or four, uh, you know, siblings that are all want to do something different. And right. it's just right. uh, can be super <clears throat> hectic and, and challenging sometimes to get everybody on the same page. And I tell people it's never a problem until it's a problem. And so you might, as an agent, think, oh, it's not a big deal. There's three or four heirs, but they're all in agreement. As long as they're all in agreement, it's great. But one day, one heir goes, hey, 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 I don't want to sell for 400. I think it's worth 450. And in many states, they can file an interruption of the process. And now you got to go to a judge. The judge has to, will say, well, I don't know anything about real estate. You have to file paperwork, get an appraisal, and come back to court and argue. And that just is time and money. And in real estate, that's what we want to avoid. So I always tell people it's not a problem until it's a problem. Yeah. What would you say are some of the biggest challenges that come up when it comes to probate? And then how do you find them? Right. So I, I'd say that um, uh, the biggest challenges that come up is just the, the time and money. You know, you're a buyer's agent on a deal and they tell you it's a probate or they tell you there's a, something involved. And you don't think of it as a problem until it's a problem. And if, it, if they drag out the case and the rate lock expires and rates go up or you're, you know, the buyer decides he doesn't want to buy anymore, all those are potential problems for an agent or an investor. As far as for an individual person, um, you can want to buy the property, but uh, in, depending on the law and the case, sometimes you can be an escrow to buy a property and somebody else can come in and bid more and get it from you. And so it depends on, the particulars. There's all kinds of potential problems that go on 
And, and the first problem is, well, who has the authority to sell the property? You can find a neighbor who has a house and it's abandoned and the cousin shows up and says, hey, my grandparents died and we want to sell the property. Well, do they have the legal authority to sell the property or not? Do they have a legal mm. authority to sign a contract? Do they have a legal authority to sign a listing agreement? All those are questions that come up in probate. How do you find them? So I think that there's, I would say there's two different, there's three different categories of people who ask that question. One category is I'm a real estate agent and I want to work at this lead generation niche full time. If that's what you want to do, there's services that sell data. Yeah. Uh, Alltheleads.com is a great one. And there's other companies that also sell data and coaching. Uh, All the leads does coaching as well. Alltheleads.com. Uh, I'm not an affiliate. I don't get paid by them. I just started with them. They're great. And I think it's a great place to start. They have a great website and a YouTube channel that has a lot of, um, they have a mastermind they record. They have role play they record. Awesome. It's a great place to go to. There's competitors as well. Um, if you're an agent, but you just want to, you know, learn a little bit about it. It's a niche. You want to plan it, get more educated and do an occasional deal. Again, those are, that's another solution. How do you find those deals? Um, well, you could buy the data or you can, in your MLS, notice when they come listed up and decide how you want to approach them. And then there's the people who really, um, they're just investors who want to buy property. And I would say find an agent who specializes in probate and approach them about being able to invest with them and see if they have listings that come up in the market that you want to move in on quickly. And that's another way to approach what I call the off-market uh, properties. I, I have a YouTube channel that I record. I don't sell coaching. I'm just a, a broker in California. Uh, Bill Gross EXP is my YouTube channel. And I have a video on the 11 ways that you can find a deal in probate real estate. Cool. So d does, uh, does it come up a lot where, uh, you know, the, the one sibling or, or heir wants to just get rid of it to an investor. Another one wants to put it on the market and use a real estate agent and get more money. And is that something you, you deal with that a lot? And a lot. I, that's every day for me. And, and it's yeah. even worse. If you think about it as a regular, as a, a traditional real estate agent, you deal with consumers who don't know much about real estate, but you know, sell buyer sell a house once every five years who know more than you. Now you have three errors. They all know more than you. And in many cases, they've never even bought or sold a house and think they know more than you do. So one of the challenges of, of our modern uh, news industry is that it, you know, consumers believe they're empowered to know more than agents. And they might know more than a lot of them. But probate is a very particular business with some very particular rules and procedures. And so um, I'm the one that says to them all the time, hey, I'm an expert in this. If you want me to, to handle this for you, I'm glad to. If you know what you're doing, you don't need me. Good luck. I, I wish you the best. But um, but every day you have people who um, you deal with people who think they know more than you. And, and that's part of the challenge of being a real estate agent. That is, yeah, that is always, especially with all these websites. Now, what, well, let me ask you this. What, what makes you an expert at it compared to others? You know, I, great question. And I think I would say that it's not that I took a certification class. I talk to people all the time. They'll tell me, well, I'm a probate expert. I took a class two years ago. Mm. So, and so I think it's more about a commitment to a process. You know, I, I watched on YouTube uh, last night, I was watching about um, guys who make uh, Japanese knives that are used in sushi restaurants. And like they train like seven years on grinding and 11 years on the pounding of the metal. And, um, you know, I've been at this not just for, you know, two and a half, almost three years as my main focus. I've taken every class that I've seen available and paid for it. I've bought books. I've actually bought the California probate code book and read it, you know, cost a hundred bucks online at Amazon. And people say, people say, wow, it's a lot of money. Okay. It's a lot of money, but I read it. Um, and so I think, I think I would say to you, um, it, I've also done a lot of them. I've, I've, you know, as a listing agent sold in the last two years, uh, 30 or 40. And as a buyer's agent, I've represented probably 10 or 15 purchases. So I would say, but it's not the activity. It's really the commitment to, um, wanting to master the material. And I've, I've really sought out to do that as best I can. Yeah, I can, I can sense that. Um, all right, cool. So you see, you mentioned you had a video on YouTube, the 11 is 11 steps or 11 ways to 11 ways, uh, okay. sell probate real estate. So, so give us, uh, give us, what are the, what are two of those ways? What are the top two? Well, the most common way is the companies who sell you data present are, uh, the, you buy the files or the data of the filings, they have the name and phone number, maybe address, 
maybe email of the petitioner, the family member who's applying for probate to get the authority. Mm-hmm. And then market to them directly. So you can imagine you can mail to them, call them, door knock them. So they give media. you the phone numbers and everything, huh? Some phone numbers are good. Some aren't good. It's like everything else in real estate. Some yeah, are good. Some aren't. Some you have to research on your own. The ones they don't give you are the best ones, of course, like expired listings, same kind of thing. And then the attorneys. Now, attorneys are difficult to cold call, but people have done it successfully. Postcards, emails, things like that. Those are two of the 11 ways. One that I Why recommend are attorneys most difficult to cold call. You know, I think part of it is attorneys are educated. You got to give them credit. They have an advanced degree. They have a license that's usually pretty intense to get. So they tend to be very educated. And I think they look down on, and probably properly so, practitioners in our industry make a lot of money, but don't really know what they're doing. And I think too many real estate agents will say, I'm a probate expert and know nothing about what they're doing, mm. as evidenced by their poor service when they get the listing. So that's part of it. I think that's why um, I, I put that out there and, and almost challenged somebody to ask me, well, why I'm an expert? Because if you compare my results to other people, I think I didn't just take one class. Yeah. Um, but, but, you know, I want to just throw a third way because you asked for two. And I would say those are the most common two. But the third one, I think most realtors miss in most states. And again, I don't know Massachusetts as well. I believe it's true in Massachusetts. In most states, you should have a living trust if you own a house to avoid probate as well as for health directives, you know, God forbid you're incapacitated. Uh, what rules do you want the doctors to follow? Who decides that? If you have a spouse, do you want them to decide? Do you want your kids to decide? Um, uh, who takes care of your kids? I have a, uh, my, my daughter and son-in-law have a newborn child. Who, which grandparents in charge? If their grandparents are fighting over the, grandki- the kid, uh, God forbid something happens. So a living trust that used to be expensive, you can get a basic living trust for $400, $600, you get one more sophisticated for thousands of dollars. If you own a house, you should have one. But here's the key, I would say. As a real estate agent, we should be asking our clients, do you have one or not? And if not, you're buying a house, have you thought about it? Have you at least looked into it? Here's a re- And we should be able to give our customers a resource that says, here's why you should have one mm. and take a look at it. And I would say, if I'm representing you, I'll pay for it to close the rescue for you because I believe that strongly in the product. So I think that real estate agents who've been in the business a while have a past client database of two or 300 should learn about living trusts. If appropriate to your clients, then in part of your conversation, whether it be you're calling your past client list or you email to them or your social media posts or your video, you should be introducing that subject to your clients as part of your business. And I believe if you did that over time, you'll generate some business that will introduce you to probate attorneys, trust attorneys, and help launch that business for any real estate agent, not just one who focuses there for lead generation. So talk to what, so what is show, tell us your, break your, down your day and like, you know, you don't have to go super de- detail oriented, but like, what does your lead generation look like? Like, how do you, how do you get this, this, uh, this, this to a, to a, um, to a listing? How do you take a probate, like the steps? So, um, so lead generation are the same activities, whether you phone call, mail, email, social media to generate leads. And so I'm doing that to, I mean, if you're asking me personally, I used to go to court every day for three hours to meet people in person. Like an agent, my door knock, I door knocked at the court. And I was there. My goal was every day to average one and a half name, address, phone number, email a, a day. So at the end of a week, my goal was to have eight. And if I did that, I could hit, all my numbers fell in the line. How, how do you do that, though? Researching well, files? No. In, in L.A., uh, of course, this is pre-COVID. Um, you know, the court started at 8.30, so I'd be there at 7.45, dressed in a suit, tie, looking like an attorney. And I would either walk up and introduce myself to people, or people would ask me questions. Hey, you look like an attorney. You know, where's this? What's that? Where's this? I was just Johnny on the spot. And I also created a meetup two or three days a week in the courthouse where I invited investors, wholesalers, agents, to come and I would give them a tour of the court. Then I was in court from 8.30 to about 9.30. And then the, 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 the basic hearings ended at 9.30 and I would go to the, to the probate research room and I would do some work there, but I also kind of just hung out, you know, and, you know, people would ask me questions or I'd, I'd introduce myself to somebody there. So again, just like a door knocker, mm. I just did my best to meet people. I made it my business to meet people there in that environment. Um, every day. That's what I, I just like a, a, if I was a real estate agent, it. it was new. You'd yeah. say, well, go cold call for three hours or go door knock for three hours. I just did that at the courthouse that worked for me. Now yeah. my, of course, I can't do that today. So now with uh, COVID, 
I started a couple uh, online video calls where I get 40, 50 people a week and use that to my lead generation. So I built up a tr- kind of a tribe of people that, you know, call me. And now, so today my lead generation looks like Zoom calls and in podcast interviews, and also then a lot of inbound appointments with people who want to talk to me, attorneys, petitioners, things like that. That's cool. And so what do you, so I'm at the courthouse, I'm there. What do you, what do you say to me? <laughs> uh, hey, they, uh, well, again, it depends on how I found you, right? If I saw you in court and I saw you struggling with something, I might walk up the hallway to you and say, excuse me, Mr. I noticed you were just in court and you had a little problem with the probate. I'm Bill Gross. I'm not an attorney, but I'm a real estate probate expert. And I was wondering if I could maybe offer some assistance. Mm. And some say yes and some say no. Either one's fine. Enough said yes that I got business. Yeah, that's, yeah. that seems uh, pretty cool, pretty easy.